If someone is looking to use predatory mites in order to deal with a pest problem, this is probably the most important research paper they could possibly read. It's called Revision of the Lifestyles of Phytoseed Mites, Acari, Phytoseidae, and Implications for Biological Control Strategies by James A. McMurtry, Hilberto J. de Moraes, and Nazare Fama Sorasso. And here's the abstract. A new classification of lifestyles of phytoseed mites is proposed based on the findings and suggestions from many studies conducted in the 15 years since the publication of the lifestyle system by McMurtry and Croft in 1997. In this newly proposed classification, type 1 specialized mite predators is divided into three subtypes to highlight mite prey specificity. Subtype 1a, specialized predators of Tetranicus species. Subtype 1b, specialized predators of web nest producing mites, Tetranicidae in general. And subtype 1c, specialized predators of tidioids, Tidioidea. Type 2, selective predators of Tetranicid mites, remains essentially the same. Type 3, generalist predators, is a huge and diverse group of general feeders. Predators in this category are now grouped into five subtypes based on the microhabitat, occupied, and morphology. Subtype 3A, generalist predators living on pubescent leaves. Subtype 3B, generalist predators living on glabrous leaves. Type 3C, generalist predators living in confined spaces on dicotyledonous plants. And type D, generalist predators living in confined spaces on monocotyledonous plants. And then finally, type 3E, generalist predators from soil litter habitats. Type 4, pollen feeding generalist predators, also remains essentially the same. Two possible additional lifestyles include phytoseeds living on aquatic plants and phytoseeds able to pierce leaf cells. Behavioral and biological information is updated and implications for biological control strategies are discussed. The reason why this report is so helpful is that it classifies and breaks down many predatory mites into certain categories, and these categories are very relevant to their usage as biocontrol agents. For example, type 1 species go after spider mice of the family Tetranicidae, whereas type 4 species are much more generalistic and they have omnivorous capabilities, which is a very big factor in their ability to be used as preventative organisms. Because of their ability to feed on pollen, for example, type 4 predator mites are able to subsist for a longer period of time in the crop, in some cases indefinitely on pollen alone, making them very much a good and suitable predatory mite for many preventative uses. For example, Type 1 species are predator mites that go after Tetranicidae, the spider mite family. Type 4 predator mites go after, for example, broad mites, russet mites, thrips, white flies. They also sometimes go after caterpillar eggs in certain cases, although they aren't necessarily biocontrol agents for this. And they are also able to feed on non-pest materials like pollen, for example. Because of this ability, Type 4 mites can be used preventatively, but type 1 mites cannot be because they can only feed on these spider mites and they won't accept a feeder mite in lieu of proper food. So when choosing a biocontrol agent to utilize, it is very important to consider what is possible to use, what your resources are, and also what you can be using to encourage and motivate a larger amount of predatory species for less money, for less time, and for less effort, employing the use of ornamental peppers and their pollen as a food source for Amblyssia sorskii or Neostilius cucumeris would be suitable to keeping the populations at a certain level as they feed and reproduce on the pollen in lieu of pest species before they come into the crop. Because of this, they may be way more efficacious and be able to handle a larger starting population that might get out of a quarantine, for example, or through a particularly seasonal population increase. This table helpfully organizes the different types. 
specificity of prey increases with the type number. And in this proposed new system, the different types are subdivided, giving greater granularity of information and allowing for better perspective and a more precise usage of certain predatory mites. Even understanding the basic general concepts of each type is very valuable in understanding how to use predatory mites effectively and the basis for their uses. The type 1 lifestyle is described in this way. Since the first attempt to classify the phytoceids according to their feeding habits, the specificity of certain phytoceid assemblages to mite prey groups other than tetranicids was pointed out by different authors. Thus, type 1 lifestyle is now considered to include phytoceids that are specialized predators of different mite groups. This led to the need to divide this lifestyle type into three subgroups. Most people are familiar with the subtype 1A, specialized predators of Tetranicus, the genus in Tetranicidae. This subtype contains phytoceids that have adapted to attacking spider mites producing the so-called complicated web. Until now, the examples refer to phytoceids associated with the Tetranicus genus. However, it is possible that these predators can also be effective as control agents of spider mites of other genera, also known to produce the complicated web U-type. Saito mentioned some species of Eotetranicus as also producing that web type. Perhaps the most well-recognized predatory mite against spider mites is Phytocilius persimilis. And this is for good reason. According to the research report, these predators could have co-evolved with Tetranicus species. Phytocilius persimilis is very good at getting rid of spider mites. However, it does have advantages and disadvantages when compared to other predatory mites. Its usage should be based on the context of the cultivation space, what the resources are that are available, how often they can be utilized, how large the space is, and other factors. Type 2 predators are a little bit more tricky. This category includes selective predators of tetranicid mites, most often associated with dense web-producing species, such as Oligonychus and Tetranicus species. It includes series of Neocilius, Galandromus, and apparently the Riccari group of Typhlodromus. These are associated with Tetranicus species or species of other genera producing other types of webbing. Unlike type 1, type 2 have a preference for a broad range of tetranicid species, but they also feed and reproduce on mites of other groups like Areophyidae, Tarsonemidae, and Tydeodea, and also on pollen. Another very well-known predatory mite is Neostilis californicus, and this paragraph explains why it's somewhat tricky to put some of these predatory mites in their classifications. It has been questioned whether Neostilis californicus, one of the main phytoceids placed by McMurtry and Croft, into this group should not be better classified as a member of type 3. However, it is kept here in the type 2 group because it is nearly always associated with tetranicids producing heavy webbing. Type 3 phytoceids do not do well on mite prey of this type, often getting stuck in their webbing. Neocilius californicus shows adaptations for living in spider mite colonies with heavy webbing. It has the ability to cut strands of webbing with their chelicerae, and to use the front legs to tear holes in web nests of Oligonychus persiae. Type 3 predators have a very large host range compared to type 1 and type 2. It is in this type that things get a lot more diverse when it comes to the diets. Species in this category feed and reproduce on a wide range of prey, at least under laboratory conditions. And this is an important note, just because a predatory mite is able to feed on something under laboratory conditions does not mean it will be an effective biocontrol agent. Biocontrol agents should have the ability to overmatch the population growth of their pests within reasonable amounts of usage. Of course, one can always increase their efficacy by utilizing a larger proportion in an inundative release, for example. One of the benefits of using generalist mites like these is that many are omnivorous, and it is this ability that allows them to be utilized preventatively, where in which the pest organism doesn't necessarily have to be in the area. The type 4 lifestyle sees a reversal from a primarily pest or arthropod diet to a more primarily pollen or non-pest diet. This category contains phytoceid predators for which pollen constitutes an 
important part of the diet. It includes the genera Euseus, with nearly 212 species, Ephysius, and Ephysidiodes, with a single and a few known species respectively. These species generally have high reproductive capacity when feeding on pollen, and population increases often follow blossoming periods to the crop or adjacent plants. In the end, I wanted to go over the last paragraph in the conclusion of this paper because I find that it is very helpful for giving perspective. It reads, because of the considerable attention that phytoseeds have received in the last few decades, this proposed lifestyle classification must be considered as a work in progress. Two possible additional types have been mentioned in this document. While preparing this document, Farahi called our attention to the apparent preference of Typhlodromus baccarii for tree bark. An evaluation of the substrates onto which this species has been mentioned shows a strong predominance of tree hosts, although in most cases the authors do not refer to the exact plant part from which the specimens were collected. This preference is reported, however, by Farahi and others in 2006. Discovery of other species with similar behavior will justify the creation of a new group of these predators. The growing interest for the study of phytoceas around the world might lead in the future to a need for further updates of the lifestyles here defined. To sum it up, eventually, all things change, and these classifications are going to change when new information presents itself. Other paragraphs in the conclusion support this point. Cultivators, meaning to use predatory mites in their most efficient and most effective ways, need to utilize the academic resources available to them. Much of this information is also available on this YouTube channel, Xenthanol, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to assist. Thanks for watching.